What should a phlebotomist do first when identifying a patient? A. Ask the patient's name only. B. Check the room number. C. Ask the patient to state full name and date of birth. D. Check the test requisition. Answer. C. Proper identification requires verbal confirmation of full name and date of birth. Which document must be signed before performing a blood draw? A. Lab order. B. Chain of custody form. C. Consent form. D. Insurance approval. Answer. C. Informed consent is required before drawing blood for testing. Which color-coded wristband typically indicates a patient allergy? A. Red. B. Yellow. C. Blue. D. Green. Answer. A. Red wristbands usually signify allergies in a hospital setting. What does HIPAA primarily protect? A. Insurance companies. B. Medical errors. C. Patient privacy and health information. D. OSHA violations. Answer. C. HIPAA safeguards patient health information confidentiality. Which specimen requires chilling during transport? A. Glucose. B. Blood culture. C. Ammonia. D. Hemoglobin. Answer. C. Ammonia specimens must be transported on ice to preserve accuracy. What should you do if a specimen is mislabeled? A. Correct the label manually. B. Discard the specimen and redraw. C. Send it to the lab anyway. D. Notify the supervisor only. Answer. B. Mislabeled specimens must be discarded and recollected to ensure accuracy. Which PPE is mandatory when processing blood specimens? A. Hairnet. B. Gown. C. Gloves. D. Shoe covers. Answer. C. Gloves must always be worn when handling blood or body fluids. What is the primary purpose of using an antiseptic before collection? A. Prevent infection. B. Increase blood flow. C. Label the site. D. Relax the patient. Answer. A. Antiseptics reduce skin bacteria to prevent contamination or infection. What action helps prevent hemolysis during specimen collection? A. Vigorously shaking the tube. B. Using a small gauge needle. C. Allowing alcohol to dry. D. Drawing slowly with a syringe. Answer. C. Alcohol must dry completely to prevent red cell rupture, hemolysis. What is the purpose of a chain of custody? A. Patient billing. B. Legal tracking of specimen. C. Quality assurance. D. Infection control. Answer. B. Chain of custody ensures specimen integrity for legal or forensic use. How long should handwashing last in a healthcare setting? A. 5 seconds. B. 10 seconds. C. 15 to 20 seconds. D. 30 to 45 seconds. Answer. C. CDC recommends washing hands for 15 to 20 seconds to remove pathogens. A phlebotomist accidentally sticks themselves. What is the first step? A. File paperwork. B. Wash the area with soap and water. C. Call 911. D. Take a break. Answer. B. Immediate washing helps reduce infection risk from needle exposure. Which of the following is a bloodborne pathogen? A. Influenza. B. Tuberculosis. C. Hepatitis B. D. Rhinovirus. Answer. C. Hepatitis B is a virus transmitted through blood exposure. What must be included on a specimen label? A. Hospital address. B. Test code only. C. Patient name, DOB, date, and time of draw. D. Technician ID only. Answer. C. Accurate labeling includes patient identifiers and collection details. What is the primary concern when handling a biohazard spill? A. Getting it done quickly. 
B. Keeping floors dry. C. Personal protection and containment. D. Avoiding lab inspection. Answer, C. Biohazard spills require immediate and safe containment. What color indicates a biohazard waste container? A. White. B. Blue. C. Red. D. Yellow. Answer, C. Red containers are designated for disposing of biohazardous material. When is it acceptable to recap a used needle? A. After a successful blood draw. B. Never. C. When a sharps container is full. D. In emergencies only. Answer, B. Recapping is a major cause of needle stick injuries and is not permitted. How often should the centrifuge be cleaned? A. Once a week. B. Monthly. C. After each use. D. When visibly dirty. Answer, C. Cleaning after each use helps prevent cross-contamination. What does the term fomite refer to? A. A type of bacteria. B. A person infected. C. A contaminated surface. D. A sterile swab. Answer, C. Fomites are objects that carry and spread pathogens. What should be done if a requisition form has missing information? A. Guess the missing data. B. Leave the field blank. C. Ask the provider or nurse. D. Proceed with the draw anyway. Answer, C. Always verify unclear or missing info before proceeding. Which organization sets standards for phlebotomy procedures? A. FDA. B. CDC. C. OSHA. D. CLSI. Answer, D. The Clinical and Laboratory Standards Institute sets guidelines for specimen collection and handling. What is the function of a biohazard sharps container? A. Hold paperwork. B. Store supplies. C. Dispose of needles safely. D. Transport specimens. Answer, C. Sharps containers are designed to safely hold used needles and prevent injury. What type of isolation requires gloves, gown, and mask? A. Contact. B. Droplet. C. Reverse. D. Airborne. Answer, B. Droplet isolation precautions involve protection from respiratory secretions. What is the maximum time a specimen should sit before centrifugation, unless stated otherwise? A. 5 minutes. B. 30 minutes. C. 2 hours. D. 4 hours. Answer, C. Specimens should generally be centrifuged within 2 hours to preserve analytes. What is the most critical error a phlebotomist can make? A. Wrong tube used. B. Failure to wear gloves. C. Misidentifying the patient. D. Forgetting to label. Answer, C. Misidentification can lead to serious medical errors. Which sample is most sensitive to light exposure? A. Cholesterol. B. Bilirubin. C. Glucose. D. Potassium. Answer, B. Bilirubin degrades quickly in light and should be protected. Which test is used to detect tuberculosis? A. Blood culture. B. Point slash INR. C. PPD slash Mantu. D. Electrolyte panel. Answer, C. The PPD skin test checks for TB exposure. Which department handles CBC tests? A. Microbiology. B. Chemistry. C. Hematology. D. Blood bank. Answer, C. Complete blood counts are performed in the hematology lab. Which test requires a chain of custody form? A. Glucose tolerance. B. Drug screening. C. Lipid panel. D. HIV test. Answer, B. Drug testing requires legal documentation for custody tracking. What is the appropriate action if a patient refuses blood collection? A. Force the draw. 
b. Notify the provider and document. c. Ignore and return later. d. Call security. Answer, b. Refusals must be documented and the healthcare provider notified.